Welcome back, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's devotional. So we're just going to dive right in and look at what today's egg has in it, okay? Today's egg, let's see. It has a cup. Let's see what that has to do with our lesson today. I'm just going to set it right there so we can see it, okay? We're going to read from the Bible today in the book of Matthew and then the book of Exodus. And you're just going to listen while I read, okay? All right. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? As you go into the city, he told them, you will see a certain man. Tell him, the teacher says, my time has come, and I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus told them and prepared the Passover meal there. Okay, and then we're going to go and read on a couple of verses down. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. And then we're going to go to the book of Exodus. Really quick, chapter 12 and verse 23, and it says, For the Lord will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptians, but when he sees the blood on the top and sides of the doorframe, the Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. Okay, that's very interesting, right? So at Jesus' last supper with his disciples before he died on the cross, he used this cup of wine to explain his death. Christians still drink from a cup to remember Christ's blood poured out for our sins. Did you know that hundreds of years before Jesus came, Egypt made God's people into slaves? It's true. God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh to free the Jews, but Pharaoh disobeyed God and refused to let them go. Part of God's punishment for Pharaoh and his people was to send a destroyer to kill all the firstborn children in Egypt. But God told his people, the Jews, to put the blood of the lamb on their doors as a sign of their faith. He told the destroyer to pass over their houses and not kill their children. Since then, as a way of remembering God's great love and protection, Jews celebrate Passover every year. Have you ever heard that we too are slaves and need to be freed just like the Jews? It's true. We need to let go from our slavery and sin. So God sent Jesus as the perfect lamb to save us because God and his son are perfect. And the perfect blood from Jesus' death on the cross forever protects his followers from being destroyed. Any one of us who truly love and trust in Jesus will be saved from our sins and eternal death. We will be passed over. Isn't this great news? <laughs> Like when Jesus came and died for sinners to provide this salvation and protection by his blood, the meaning of Passover changed. Jesus helped his disciples understand the new meaning of the Passover meal when they ate together the night he was arrested. Jesus told his disciples that the bread would be to remember his body, which would be sacrificed and crucified on the cross the next day. Then he took the cup of wine and used it as a sign of remembrance of his blood, saying, this is my blood, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Have you ever seen people in your church take communion? They eat the bread and they drink the juice, don't they? Yeah. Christians do this all in remembrance of Jesus, especially his blood that was poured out for them to give them eternal life with God. All right, so let's go ahead and check in with our day four, with our next one. So we had the cup in this one. Let's go ahead and put it back so we don't lose it. And our next egg, ah, oh, some praying hands. All right, I wonder what that has to do with the story. So we're going to go and we're going to read in the Bible. We're going to go to the book of Mark. And we're going, whoops, we're going to get to the book of Mark, if my Bible would cooperate with me. <laughs> Chapter 14. 
All right. Here we go. And it says, they went to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And Jesus said, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him. And he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not be given into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed the same as before. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping again, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know what to say. When he returned to them a third time, he said, Go ahead and sleep, have your rest, but know the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. Hmm. Okay, so Jesus gives us a wonderful example of the importance of prayer. He often went into the city to pray to God the Father off by himself. And during this difficult time, he was, uh, right before he was captured, Jesus just wanted his disciples to pray for him. He knew he was going to die. And since he never sinned, he never experienced any of God's forsaking him, because of the sin. But Jesus was willing to die on the cross because he knew that this was his father's plan to save people who put their trust in him. Do you think it would be hard to die and have God turn away from you? Would you pray? Jesus was God, but even he believed that prayer to his father was needed. So Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples to pray, but they fell asleep. Not once, not twice, but three times. Do you ever get tired when you try to pray? I know I do. It's hard to be strong when you're tired, isn't it? Jesus' disciples were weak when they tried to be strong on their own, apart from God. While Jesus cried out to the Father in prayer, three times he returned to find his disciples sleeping. This is a reminder to all of us that we cannot be strong on our own. We need to pray and ask for our Father's strength, just like Jesus did. All right, boys and girls, it's been great hanging out with you today. Check back in tomorrow to see what Mr. Ryan has to say with the next two eggs.